I'm Alex Sear, and this is the Marathon Handbook YouTube channel. What are we reviewing today? The Brooks Hyperion Elite 4. Let's go. So Brooks were kind enough to send us their ultimate road racing shoe so that we can check it out from tip to tip and provide you with an honest review. So I was super stoked about trying these shoes because I think we're entering an era where the heavy hitters of the shoe world like Nike and Adidas finish him are really feeling the pressure from underdogs who are producing increasingly better shoes. So that's Brooks, that's Puma, that's Saucony. But I'm still curious. Is the Hyperion 4 as good as the best shoes in the world? And is it worth the buy? Let's find out. First, let's go into a nice panning shot. Not what I meant. That's better. So what is it about these shoes that caught my attention? For me, it was their versatility. We've seen athletes across specialties rock the Hyperion Elite 4s and have a lot of success. The first time I became aware of them was in September when Josh Kerr, track and field's trash talker of the year, you must be surrounded by so many yes men that you don't realize that you have weaknesses. Wore them for the 5th Avenue mile and won in a time of 3.47.9. That must be the fastest mile ever run on the road with super shoes and not track spikes. I dare you to find a faster one. And then we fell in love with Zach Panning, the relatively unknown marathoner who took the US marathon trials by storm and led for the first 20 miles while wearing a pair of Hyperion Elite 4s. He eventually faded to six, but not before everyone noticed his shoe of choice. So to me, that settled it. Brooks had developed a super shoe trusted by marathoners and milers alike, which is pretty rare. So I had to ask, what is so special about it? Here's what jumps out at me. On paper, the Hyperion Elite 4 has all the same parameters as the Nike Alpha Fly 3, but they don't feel the same. The Alpha Fly 3 is far more cushioned. It's a lot like the NB Fuel Cell Elite V4, these super plush shoes that offer a bouncy ride. The Hyperion Elite is firmer and makes it less awkward for sprinting because you bounce off quickly from the ground. It's a lot like the On Cloud Monster 3 if you've ever tried that one. But the other thing... The Hyperion Elite 4 also lacks a bit of that rock forward mechanism that we see in the Alpha Fly that puts runners on their toes. This one is more prone to keep you on your midfoot or even on your heel. And so if you're more comfortable as a heel striker or midfoot striker, this one might be more for you. Let's dive a bit deeper into what makes these shoes unique. In their case, it's the Speed Vault Race Plus Propulsion Plate, a network of carbon rods that extend through the shoe. It looks and feels a little similar to the metatarsal phalanges that Adidas has in their super shoes, and also looks like what Spider-Man would wear if he was trying to qualify for the Olympics. That carbon is embedded inside of an updated nitrogen-infused DNA Flash V2 foam. Wow, that's a mouthful. You might remember similar tech and jargon inside of previous Hyperion models. This new material delivers better energy return and makes the whole shoe 10% lighter than its predecessors, which some critics said lacked a little bit of pop. <laughs> the lower is covered in a tire-like network of rubber that protects against abrasion and offers good traction, making any texture the perfect texture for running. The upper has significant ventilation holes, which makes it breathable and snug. Their quick knit material here is highly elastic, like a lightweight second layer of skin. Feels like I'm wearing nothing at all. But it's not necessarily a great insulator for the cold air. So if you're running in them in the winter, break out your thick socks. What, you don't like my bags? Time for the sexy scale. <whistles> you know, as far as super shoes go, these are the most average looking ones I've ever seen. <laughs> They're like training shoes in disguise, and the problem is they lack a certain thing. Most super shoes have a thing, a trademark. Nike has the AirPods at the bottom. They also have those cryptic little numbers on their side that gets people talking. New Balance is making shoes that look like they belong on the feet of Transformers. These? I just don't know. These are the most understated training shoes I've ever seen. These are what you wear when you're walking across town and you have to get somewhere really fast, but you don't want everyone to look at your crazy wild pink cloud shoes. This is it. The redeeming quality is the colorway. I love the white and orange. It's like a Charizard on your feet. So for that, I'll give it a 6.5, challenging Brooks to do something wackier next time. So with all that said, should you buy the Brooks Hyperion Elite Force? 
Well, if you're a midfoot to heel striker who doesn't necessarily like being thrusted onto your toes when you race, if you like a good bang for your buck, dollar, dollar bills, y'all. And if you like a traditionally feeling shoe that gets you through the mile, the marathon, and everything in between, this is a good pick for you. However, if you're in the market for a marshmallow style shoe like the Nike Alpha Fly 3 or the Adidas Adios Pro 3, for example, you might find yourself a little bit disappointed. This feels a lot more like a training shoe, but a training shoe with a bounce. So consider that next time you go to the store. Thanks a lot for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe to our channel and please follow us on our social media. And you'll see me next time.